everyone. We are going to get started in just a minute. I've been watching the chats over here. Thank you all for your good days and good mornings and good evenings from, my goodness, I've lost track of all the countries here. Um, it's, it's super exciting to see everybody from all over the world, as always. Steve, I told you it was pretty cool. I hope you're watching the chat because it's like, man, this is fabulous. This is literally the whole world here. So anyways, we're gonna get started in one minute because I know there are still people joining us and then we will um, get our session underway today, which is gonna be really, really interesting and really sort of uh, different from what we've done before, but I'll keep you all in suspense. Steve, I'm keeping everybody in suspense for, for 30, 30 more seconds. <laughs> so Iran has joined us, Tanzania, Cyprus, Egypt, Oh my goodness, what else did I see? There's Malaysia. Ah, from Normandy, France. Rainy today. Uh, Madagascar, cool. Barcelona, fabulous. These are all the places I would love to go back to. Hello, Cosimo, from Stockholm. Oh, there's a lot of folks joining us. Boom, uh, Bahamas, Italy, Egypt, I can't keep up. From Hot Island, Singapore, Iran, Istanbul. Hello, love Istanbul. Love all these places. My goodness. Hello from the French Alps. Think of all the places we could go on vacation, Steve. Wouldn't that be great? You can just kind of pick one and, and like just reach out to somebody and be like, hey, you know, I want to go here or there or wherever. So yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Brazil. Oh, my goodness. Saudi. <laughs> Fantastic. Hello, Priscilla from Brazil. Anyways, okay, I think it's, there we go, 702. So let's let's go ahead and uh, and jump into our, our morning here. So today is going to be a little bit different because if we think about the fact of just how many meals are not cooked in restaurants, if we think about how many meals are cooked in the home, it really represents the majority of the food that's cooked around the world. Now, now, clearly, we're all in the food service world, and we spend our lives thinking about food and restaurants and hotels and resorts and all the things that we do professionally. But at the end of the day, we all go back to a place where we live. And maybe we go back to a family and you know, there's cooking that's happening there. So today we're, we're shifting our focus a little bit from that professional side of things that we always look at to instead take a moment and look at what happens in the home when it comes to cooking. What happens, I mean, how are we cooking? What's the future looking like of how we cook at home? And that's a really, really interesting sort of topic for us. Plus, I think, and we're going to get to this at the end of this, is I think there's a reason why us chefs have a vested interest to know about what's happening in terms of appliance and cooking and sustainability on the home front, in addition to what we have to know uh, professionally. So with that, I want to introduce Steve Swain, who has joined us uh, today and um, is quite the expert. So a little quick introduction. Steve Swain is director of Electrolux Group Cooking Competence Center. A former chef and restaurateur, Swain uses more than 25 years of restaurant knowledge to help develop home cooking appliances. So he's one of us. All right. <laughs> he has a passion for ensuring the consumer can create a great meal at home. And that passion has driven him to have more than 25 patents. His current focus is on healthy, sustainable eating, which fits perfectly into Feed the Planet and all that we think about. On the personal side, Swain resides in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, Nashville is known as the Music City. It's a great place to visit, live. Uh, so Swain takes advantage and frequently enjoys live music as well as the growing restaurant scene, yes. Um, his hobbies include painting, sculpting, and I didn't see this until this morning because I'm reading your bio here, and clothing design. Yeah. I think you may be our only guest that we've ever had who had clothing design as a hobby. So kind of cool. Oh, great. Thank Anyways, you. Steve, a big welcome. And later we'll have to talk about how you can maybe design the next chef jacket because chef jackets haven't changed in like 
a Forever. thousand years. Yeah, yeah. So let's go ahead and 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 jump into this. Um, and and maybe I just want to start with a little bit of a background question. And um, you know, in your bio it says you spent twenty five years in the restaurant world. So maybe just just give us a little background of you and you know, kind of what you did there and and how you made this 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 jump, if you will. So I. I... Started in the restaurant business at 14, you know, washing dishes and, you know, kind of caught the bug and just worked my way through, did everything in the restaurant business from dishwasher to chef to, you know, operator, um, the whole gamut, um, did it, loved it, got into it, uh, and life happened, got married and, and had this interaction where, you know, I'd rather spend more time with my family than what's required to, to be in the restaurant business. As you all know, after 25 years, I'm, you know, it was um, it, it was better for me to look for something else and um, for, for my family um, and found uh, appliances. And it just was a kind of a natural fit. And I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm home. I can be creative, creating not food, but the way appliances cook food. And it, it just makes me happy. So I, I love the way that you said this, because, you know, a lot of people and I've, I mean, we've all heard stories of, you know, I was in the restaurant world <clears throat> for X amount of time. Then there were, you know, pressures of family health, you know, my, my knees were giving out all that stuff you hear. But I think what's fascinating about what you just said is it's not that, oh, I had to change jobs you know, woe is me, but I had to change jobs, but I found something that was really captivating, which I think is, 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 um, it's really interesting for us because a lot of us have to think about those things at some point. Question though, as a follow-up, so you've spent 25 years in restaurants, then you transition over to the appliance world, the appliance world in terms of home appliances. So what are the, what are the learnings that you took from the professional world into the appliance world that you're in now? I mean, how did, how did, you know, I guess, or are there learnings that you're, or is this just totally different? Uh, it's, um, it, it's totally different, but totally the same. I, I mean, the, the science behind cooking is the same, whether, you, wh whether you're in a restaurant or whether you're at home, it's the understanding of that science that that's quite different at home. Um, and so, you know, it, as a, a chef, you understand the, the correct temperature for simmer. Well, at home, you turn it to the lowest setting, um, you know, and, and that's where people would get simmer. Now, in the modern world, you do that and you're not going to get simmer. So, you know, some of that is uh, as a home appliance manufacturer, we have to educate people, you know, where to get the correct temperature to simmer properly to get the food correct. So it's it's those type of learnings that uh, have helped me along the way um, in the appliance business. It sounds to me, excuse me, like a little bit like when chefs write recipes for consumers, and then we start using all kinds of terms that we all know, but they don't know, and they're like, "What does this mean, braise?" Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and and you have to yeah. you have to break it down. I think one of the fun things, and and you know, we were talking the other day. And you mentioned to me on this whole simmer thing, because I've written recipes many times, as many of you have, for, um, for a consumer versus for a professional. And one of the things that, that we will say is, you know, turn heat to low. And, what, and your comment is very interesting, which is, you know, on a, on a consumer stove, low may not be enough to do much of anything. Right. And, you know, as, as we start, you know, we talked about induction, you, you turn it to low on induction and, you know, it, it's induction is going to be very low. So it uh, so we'll fuel type really talking. matters. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and on a, on a, a new gas appliance, consumer gas appliance on the smallest burner, you can actually melt chocolate. And so it, it's, it's amazing the advancements that, um, have come along in the consumer appliances. It, it, it's just amazing what we can do now. Okay, so 
let's get into that because and maybe and maybe before I get into where we're going to go, because part of I think, well, you know, we we sort of build this as as a sneak peek into the future, which, which I frankly can't wait to get to. Um, but let's let's just talk for a minute about the evolution of, of where we have come from. And then maybe as a follow up, then I'll, I'll talk about where we're going. But can you maybe just give an overview of just, you know, where what has happened in the world of home cooking in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years? Has has there been evolution or has it been pretty static? Oh, so there's been great leaps and bounds as uh, consumer electronics um, has taken great leaps. So has the cooking appliance business. I mean, we, we actually have controls now in a residential appliance that has more processing capability than would put a man on the moon. I mean, so it's the, the technology that, that goes into your home appliance is fantastic now. And it gives us the ability to do a lot more innovative and creative ways um, to help the consumer get chef quality food. Okay, can you give me a concrete example of that? Okay, so um, there's a, a patented feature um, that we have on a home appliance. It's air sous vide. So when sous vide, the, the concept of sous vide was uh, initially created, it was done with hot air. Um, it wasn't really practical. Um, then in the 70s, it was picked up and, and water bath was a, a much easier way of maintaining that temperature. N now we have the ability um, with the controls and a high power convection system is to transfer the heat through convection versus conduction in, in a water bath. So, so I could cook in a bag? Cook in a bag in your oven without water <laughs> i would just i would just love to ask the question for everybody who's who's on the on in in the chat over here like have you ever heard of that i mean i i mean this is this is this is new information for me because we're always we're always going to drop it in water right so so interestingly at home i could i could actually do that because it's kind of funny we think of like sous vide cooking as as something that is you know more professional if you will but I run into so many people now who are like, oh, yeah, I sous vide my steak. I sous vide my salmon. I sous vide my vegetables. And of course, the, the cool thing here is I could do it in my oven and not have to have a circulator and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and the great thing is because the oven is so well insulated, it, it's more efficient than like using a, a slow cooker as far as energy consumption. And, and so it, it's gives you great quality food, ease of use, and it's actually sustainable. It's fantastic. My goodness. All right. So I've learned something today. This is cool. Um, so how about let's now, now, you know, we've talked about, you know, where we've come and that we could actually, there's more electronics in your, in your appliance than, than to put a man on the moon. So it's kind of fun. If you guys got to work on an, on an oven, that'll go to the moon. Just FYI, <laughs> put that on your, on your, on your Electrolux dream list anyways. Um, but, but let's talk about where we go from here. You know, what does it look like five to 10 years from now? Give us what, you know, what are you envisioning when I come home to my kitchen What's there? Does it look like today? You know, are we going to microwave everything? Is it what? What does it look like? Um, you know, it it'll look the same, but it, it can also look different. I, I think there'll always be a need for the the standard, you, you know, in North America, thirty inch freestanding range that you will always have a need for that. Um, but as we get into what that that range will do and it'll be interesting because it'll be more energy efficient. Um, I think you'll see more and more induction um, throughout the residential use. Um, you'll, you'll also get more guided and assisted, um, the ability to use a guided and assisted cooking. Um, so it, um, it'll, it'll get to the point where it, it should almost be like having a chef in the room teaching you and guiding you along your dinner 
you know, creation. So that's kind of wild. So, so one of the, one of the, the, the things that you said when we were talking before, and I, and I'm going to, it, it's a little, it's a quote you gave me that really st- stuck in my brain. And it was like, your goal is to get chef quality results without the chef. Because I, so, so I guess it just expand on that a little bit because, you know, most people, you know, don't have a chef in their home. Right. And so yeah. interestingly, you know, we, I see two sort of, sort of, sort of trends. Now this is maybe, again, I'm coming from, you know, a North American, you know, sort of looking at things, but the trend is that I see so often is that during the week, people are really busy. They still want to provide meals for their home, for their family. And then on the weekend, they want to be like a chef, you know, and, 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 and try to cook things that are, that are more challenging, et cetera, um, because it's a, it's, a, it's a hobby for them. So how do, you, how, do you, how do you empower someone to get chef results without a chef being there? Well, it, again, it comes down to um, AI, um, you know, artificial intelligence and, and being able to create something digitally and, and communicate that to the consumer via their um, appliance or an app or, or something like that. So it, it's um, augmented reality is probably not that too far away where you could have a virtual chef standing next to you. you um, I, I mean, <laughs> as, as electronics you know, become cheaper and cheaper, we, we will find a way to put that in, in your kitchen and, and help you along the way. I don't know. You know, Lynn, Lynn is listening here and some other people from, from World Chef's office. I think there's something here, guys, for World Chef's. I think I think we need to have like a list of World Chef's chefs and you can, you know, you can choose who you want in your kitchen to be standing next to you as like a hologram. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> Anyways, all right, so let's talk, you, 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 you mentioned induction and, you know, I remember when I used to work in France, uh, when I was a a young guy and I'm not a young guy anymore. So that goes back quite a number of years. And, you know, induction was kind of that newer thing that was coming out. This is probably in the, you know, eighties, mid eighties. And, um, I remember them being unbelievably fast, unbelievably efficient, but, but unbelievably expensive. And even today, a lot of the induction I've seen, you know, in, in home models has been, you know, kind of on the pricier side of things. Where do you see induction going? I mean, and, and maybe just talk about that also from a sustainability standpoint, because that's, a, I personally, I think it's a really important thing. So maybe talk about sustainability of induction and, you know, where does that go? Well, you know, definitely in inductions, very energy efficient. I mean, the the, the heat transfer. Um, you, you know, we have residential models that that can boil. You know, two cups of water in less than ninety seconds. I mean, it, it's fantastic. Um, it heats up quickly, cools down quickly, um, saves you energy. Um, I, I think that the direction that that we're going um, in for Electrolux is trying to bring that that cost down um, to where any consumer can, can afford to use it. Um, here in North America, inductions just kind of started out and growing, but but we have models now that uh, you can get a, a freestanding range, but a very well-appointed freestanding range uh, with induction under $1,500. In Europe, you can get a, a great cooktop for under 500 euros. So the, the really the, the technologies really come down in price. Hmm. This is very, and, and I'm, I'm watching some comments in the chat here, but also, and Lynn just sent it to everybody, please put your, your questions in the Q and A because yeah. we'll be looking at those in a minute. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's some, there's some, some chat going on about, you know, the, the, the cost of technology. So I think that's mm-hmm. a really interesting thing that you're, that you're doing. Um, but let's, but let's sort of segue into the, you know, the question of sustainability, because that's, you know, our big focus here and what are you doing and what do you see happening? Maybe not just where you work, but, you know, in the home appliance world a little bit, what do you see happening with sustainability? Is there a focus on making things more sustainable? What is the, you know, where are we going with that? Because again, 
we focus a lot on that from a professional standpoint, but, but the vast number of, or the vast amount of cooking is still done at home. Can we make an impact there? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, Electrolux has a commitment to sustainability. I mean, it, it's one of the things that uh, I, I'm very proud of being associated with Electrolux because of their their views on, on sustainability. Um, in, in fact, in, in cooking, it's our, our kind of mantra is make healthy, sustainable cooking the preferred choice. So we're we're all in with Electrolux. Um so when, when it comes to, to, to cooking at home and, and sustainability is so much different uh, globally or person to person and, you know, how, how do I become more sustainable? So some people become more sustainable by buying, you know, Electrolux products or, or somebody that, that, that is producing sustainable products. So I can be sustainable as a consumer just by buying more sustainable products. Um, I can use by induction versus gas or electric that that's more sustainable. I mean, there's, there's things that the consumer can do, you know, to, to feel better about themselves, just small, simple steps. And, and then, you know, for us in, in the, the residential appliance, as we get into guided cooking, how I guide people, I can guide them to use their appliance more sustainably. And, and that, that's part of the goal is, is, to, to give that gentle nudge to, you know, hey, hey, instead of, you know, turning your appliance on, you know, an hour before letting it heat up, you know, we, we have a no preheat function that you can put your food right in the oven, no preheat, it comes out perfectly within the, the recipe time. So again, we, we can nudge people to that, that sustainable edge without pushing them all the way over and, and making them uncomfortable. That's really interesting because one of the things that we talk about in, in the professional world is, you know, one of the great ways to change or make an impact on sustainability oftentimes is changing, changing behavior. You know, we've, we've talked about that preheating the oven and, you know, turning the hoods on and all that stuff before we need it. And, and that's, I haven't actually heard that. So from a, from a, a home appliance standpoint, that's really cool. That's really cool. So, so let me just, you know, again, you've got over, you know, there's a, there's a lot of chefs here, you know, cooks, culinary students who are joining us today. I, I think a couple of questions just for us, you know, what is the role of chefs in, in the home appliance space? Is there a role for chefs? And, and, and I, and I, and I think maybe the follow-up to that is, you know, is there kind of a back and forth? I mean, can, can, can chefs learn from what's happening at home and vice versa? So uh, I always look to, to chefs when, for inspiration. I mean, when, when I'm needing to feel creative, I, I don't turn on the television and watch cooking shows. I, I actually go to a restaurant where I can sample the food and eat and taste it. And, and you, you pull inspiration from others that way. And, and I see that, that that will continue. I mean, people go to restaurants for great food, but it, it, it's that inspiration and love of food that, that really draws you in. I, I, I think chefs can also, in the residential appliance world, it, as we talk about induction, people still think, oh, every chef cooks with gas because it's, it's better. You have more control of gas. And, and I, I don't think that enough chefs are talking about induction and, and how great that technology is. And, and I think because it is more sustainable, we can help pull that, that into the residential world a little bit easier, especially in North America. It, it's, it's happening in Europe. Um, but in North America, I, I think that if chefs talk about, hey, we use this was cooked with induction or, you know, this was done sous vide. Some of the things that, that chefs use that are sustainable, if they promote it on their menu, it, it helps pull that into the restaurant, into the residential um, very easily. People follow chefs. That's, they, that's they really want interesting. That inspiration. Well, yeah. Well, and I think it's I think it, it's important for us as chefs to know what's going on in the residential space. And, and, and the reason I, I say this is, and, and chefs who are listening, you know, how many, how many times has somebody gone to come to you and said, Hey, I want to buy knives for my house. Like what knife should I buy? 
I want to buy pots and pans for my house. What pots and pans should I buy? I'm working on remodeling my kitchen. You know, what should I know or who should I buy from? Or, and, I, you know, we, we talk on this on this webcast a lot about the power of the white jacket. We also have the, you know, people look to us like somehow we are also the experts in everything appliances it in the home. <laughs> and I, I will be the first to admit that is not my expertise, but I get those questions. So I think this is, Steve, this is really interesting because I think it empowers us to, you know, to talk about that. So I have some questions here. Uh, the first one is, that's a really interesting question. Can the microwave be the next big ally for sustainable cooking? Uh, you will see more and more out of microwaves in the future. So, yes, I mean, I mean the, um, you know, the, the technology um, with a stirrer in a microwave, uh, which helps move the microwave particles around versus a turntable. I mean, all of that with technology is becoming better at producing great food. So yes, I, I see that as a big part of the future uh, with sustainability. Interesting, because it does cook really fast. Right. And, you know, I mean, just from my perspective, the the progress that's been made in microwaves over the last 10 years is is remarkable. But still, there's this weird thing about like, you know, you know, like, you know, oh, I'm sure you chefs don't don't use a microwave. Like somehow that's, I don't know, cheating. Like, of course I use a microwave. <laughs> you know, it's just right. another tool. So um there's a there's an interesting question here. I'm not sure if this is a, a well, anyways, the, the question is, you know, what are the rules to becoming a sustainable chef? I'm not sure if we can answer that right now because there isn't like a set number of rules. But I think as we talk about here, it's really about doing the right thing in many different arenas, many different parts of what we call the sustainability equation. And one of them is, you know, how do you cook? You know, how efficient is the, is the equipment? What is your behavior? How do you reduce water consumption? How do you reduce energy consumption, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a comment here, Steve, which isn't really a question, but I think you've already answered it, but I just want to call it out. And, and I've seen a few comments in the chats also just about cost. You know, everybody's like, well, you know, sure, there's great technology out there, but, you know, who, who can, you know, who can possibly afford all that? And I think, you, and again, you've answered that as a commitment that you have, you know, to, to try to bring more sustainable equipment um, to a more affordable level. Because at the end of the day, you know, if it's for the 0.001%, then we've really not made a difference in sustainability. Would you agree with that? Correct. Yes, totally. And and I, I, again, that that's something that I'm really proud of Electrolux for doing is is bringing that that technology down to to the masses. All right. Last question in the question thing here. Um, and we talked a little bit about this, but I want you to talk more about this because is this this is interesting. Can we use the vacuum bag, so sous vide, in mm -hmm. the air ovens? And again, we're all used to putting it in water <laughs> with a circulator. Tell us a little bit about that, if you could just go a little bit deeper into that. So again, um, we, we call it air sous vide. Um, it, it's done in a vacuum bag in the oven um, with this particular mode that you select. Um, it limits the, the temperature. Um, to a suitable temperature that the bag will not melt or explode. Um, so, and, and it's a very precise temperature. It, we, we hold it to plus zero minus two. So very, very precise temperature um, control um, in, in, in your oven. So, you so, know, so translated, if, yeah. if, you know, and maybe the answer to the is, Yes, it's possible to do this in an oven, but you have to be sure you have the right oven that is yes. temp temperature sensitive. I mean, I know a lot of the ovens that I've used over the years, especially when you get to lower temperatures, it's like eh, sort of accurate. You know, you don't want to be off by 50 degrees. Yeah. And, and, and this is this is a mode that uh, th this is a, a patented feature that that we developed and it's um just in in certain ovens that that has that control and and you're right it, it, if you 
the, the science behind it and in, in how we control the oven is, is totally different in this mode. We use a, a PID much like a, a cruise control in your car versus a, a hysteresis um, in, in standard modes that's like your heat and air system that, that heats up and cools down. So the, the, the technology that we use to control the oven is different for this particular mode. Interesting. There was one comment in the chat here I just want to call out that I saw when we were talking about microwaves, and that is that, you know, microwaves are incredibly energy efficient. And uh, just, you know, again, something to think about as we all think about the future of cooking and everything, we want to think about how we can perform cooking and use as little energy as possible. That's just an interesting call out. All right, last question for you is, we have a bunch of professionals listening. Maybe there's some young people who are like, wow, I never thought about working in this world. What advice do you have for them if they're like, I, I don't know. I mean, I want to be like Steve. <laughs> what, what advice would you have for them? Um, if you want to be like me, pursue it. I, I, I always tell, um, you know, people to, to walk in the shoes of, of where you want to be and, and you know, to, to get into this field. I mean, there, there's a number of uh, appliance manufacturers around the world. Um, all of them have some degree of, of what we do. Um, look into it. Uh, I mean, it, it's a great, um, it's a great career. Um, and, you know, Electrolux is a great company to work for. And it, it allows you to, to be close to food, close to what you love, um, but but with a different twist. So it, it's kind of fun. And, and interestingly, you could make a huge impact on the world because anyways, mm -hmm. with that, I do need to wrap it up. I do, by the way, want to apologize to everybody. I think my, my, my camera on my computer is slowly dying, which means I'm getting fuzzier and fuzzier. Maybe it's just how I feel this morning. Like my, my computer is reading my brain and being like, you feel kind of fuzzy today. So I'll make you fuzzy looking. So I'm slightly blurry. But anyways, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, we will do this again next month. Uh, different guest, obviously. We have some really, really neat stuff coming to you next month. So please uh, be back with us. Um, it is always a pleasure to have you all. Um, time is a gift. So thank you. And 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 thank you so much. Uh, Lynn, um, you know, with World Chefs, as I always say, she's the one behind the curtain. She makes it all happen. She's She's always hidden from view behind the picture of, I think when we were in Malaysia, maybe there, but Lynn, uh, call out to you and everybody else in the office there in Paris. Thank you for making this happen. And of course, Steve, you know, you taking the time to be with us today. And truly, I, I, this, this has been very, very educational for me, because again, this is not a part of food that I always think about. So um, a huge thank you for, for sort of sharing your, your wisdom and insights with us. Thank you for inviting me. And with that, I will see everybody next month. Have a great day, a great morning. And for those of you like way over like towards Australia, finish your glass of wine and go to bed. Bye guys.